Um, yeah, so uh, um, this is a reflection on scaling. Um, what we were able to achieve or do under scaling from Maziwa Zaidi phase two or this phase. Um, and, and, and we see how, th how that work has informed what we, we are already doing by looking at the achievement and, and what learnings we can draw from that, uh, from that piece of work. Um, so early on in the, in the project, we did a scaling scan and um, for the, the scaling scan, the, the, the main objective there was uh, firstly is to have everyone look at this work or approach the work with a scaling, uh, a scaling lens. Uh, so develop sort of like a scaling mindset um, for, for all the, the partners and, and the stakeholders that at the time we had, uh, including the project staff. Um, secondly, was also to appreciate the various, the different dimensions of, uh, of scaling that exist. Mostly, most of the time we look at, uh, um, scaling is quite a popular subject and, uh, it's understanding, uh, understanding of its, its concept is not as, it doesn't go to ha hand in hand with, with, with how popular, um, the, the topic or the subject itself is. And, and, and therefore scaling out, increasing numbers, um, um, increasing dissemination, multiplication of the technologies usually gets the, the, uh, the, 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 the most focus when scaling is discussed. But we wanted also for, the, for this, for our group to develop or appreciate these other, the other different dimensions of scaling up where we, in, 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 we are looking at transforming institutional institutions, the conditions, existing conditions and environment. And I think in the project, uh, you, you can see that this has been done in, in creating an environment for whether it's agripreneurs, uh, whether it's for stakeholders in government or private, uh, ensuring that we are not just working on increasing the numbers, that there is, we are doing something around uh, institutional work, like influencing policies, um, and, and creating or developing groundwork for strategic partnerships. Um, there's a, the other dimension of scaling deep, which we, in the project, scaling deep is, you know, refers to changing minds, values, and, and some cultural practices. And this, in these specific projects, we, uh, we have seen in the work that we are doing with, with encouraging uh, women and youth to especially participate and I think I from what I've heard in the last few days um, this has come out very well in the uh, um, work around precaria and forages as a, as, a, as a business that the uptake there is is, is being owned or driven by uh, by women and youth um, and finally as, a, as an objective of the scaling scan was to have a scaling ambition and if if you recall, we, we had different ambitions for the different technologies, ECF, AI, Bricaria, and manure work. But one of the achievements we did was also to consolidate, to integrate uh, all those into one scaling ambition. This gives us a target as, a, as, a, as an integrated project. Um, gives us a target in terms of uh, the scaling ambition, which has a very specific framework um, and which I will... Uh, highlight uh, in, in, in later slide in a later slide. Another achievement still from the scaling scan process was uh, for the project to appreciate the non-technical elements, um, the role of non-technical elements uh, to achieving impact. And the difference between um, how we, we look at scaling and, and impact is that normally in the project setting, you'd still uh, look at uh, impact. Um, but we want to, under scaling, we want to look at impact even when there are no direct inputs by, by the project. And therefore, and that's why we bring in these other scaling um, ingredients. These 10 ingredients you see in the, in, in the image on your right, on, on your right, starting from technology up there, uh, that we are not just focusing on, on the actual innovations that we are bringing on the table, for instance, an ECF vaccine, that we appreciate the role of awareness uh, of this technology or innovation um, in achieving impact or, or getting scale up of this of, of that innovation and, and and so forth and so forth for the for the for the 10 elements 
I think for businesses, it comes it comes out very clear in this integrated project. Well, I think I've had uh, conversations around bundling of uh, of of innovate of of technologies as a business model, and 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 this appreciation, this kind of work is 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 actually what the scaling um, the scaling scan brings brings out in this in this work that we are doing. The image on your right down there, on your left down, um, is I think it's called ECF, is around scaling pathways. Uh, and one of the achievements that we also have, constantly have, and this is a reference, uh, sort of, it's like a um, long, long time ago, we used to call them logical framework. It's, it's a reference point. These are reference points. There's a pathway is there for you to, to determine for this specific uh, context and uh, with the resources ex that exist, what pathway is best for us to pursue? And for ECF at that moment was private sector pathway uh, down there. It's not clear, but you can see the the pink purple uh, color um, that through some queries you find a pathway for those conditions. This was done with the stakeholders on board, and and this therefore informs uh, the work around ECF um, when we work with the with the agripreneurs so we're not we're no longer just working on high like hypothetical uh as a project team hypothetically sitting down and thinking this is the way it's supposed to be that in the in, in involving stakeholders we get a pathway that they are also confident that exists some of the learnings we draw is uh use of these uh pathways and we learn that that different there are different pathways for for the different types of uh business lines for for the precaria uh, forage, for, for manure. So we, we appreciate that those pathways would be different. Um, some might be private-led or private, public-private-led or private-private. Um, and the importance of working through partners to, for one to enhance sustainability. Um, because for scaling, we, we want to achieve impact even when the project is no longer directly inputting, uh, having inputs in the project. I've mentioned uh, part of the lessons um, from the reflections that we did with uh, that kit uh, did yesterday um, is around some of these scaling ingredients, uh, learnings, um, value chain, technology, business model. So appreciating at the end of the project that these non-technical elements are usually um, just as important as the actual innovation that you have um, in the beginning. And finally, that a scaling ambition is, is has a, spe a specific framework um, and, and therefore forms uh, a target that we can aim at. And in this target, we have other considerations like environment, what is the impact of, of our work to the system, uh, to women and youth. And, and in our case, we also uh, had an, a learning on how to integrate different scaling ambitions. Significance uh, or implications is that, um, again, we can see from our work that right now we, from the pulse process we did with the kit yesterday, that, you know, we, we are the moment where we can't ass ass assess outcomes right now, we, we, but we see progress. So, and therefore, uh, we, we learn that it takes a bit of time for us to achieve the scaling target ambition. Um, the importance of having a scaling plan in the beginning or from the beginning, uh, because then it informs the pathways, it informs the scaling ingredients and the assumptions that we all uh, then work, uh, work with. Um, most importantly, we have a target in the scaling ambition at the flagship level, technology level, and also as an integrated package level as a project um, that we can periodically assess. And, and I think this has been ably supported by, by KIT all along. Over to you, uh, Peter. Thank you.